psychological experiment. Experiments are a very important part of psychology. You may be anxious to dive right into wild and wacky behaviors, uh, uh, but psychology is built on experiments. And if you need help learning them, come and see me. I'll show you all about experiments. I even have an extra electronic beanie. <laughs> uh, Fritz here, Fritz loves to be part of psychological experiments. <laughs> Psychologists use the scientific method to study psychological phenomena. The scientific method is a process of developing theories or explanations of behavior. The scientific method is a four-step process that goes like this. First, you develop a theory. Then you form a hypothesis, which is a testable prediction. Then you conduct a study that suggests a cause and effect relationship. After the study, you take your results and adjust your original prediction. Then you design another study to test your refined hypothesis. My theory is that my mom is lame. And my hypothesis is that she won't let me see my favorite band in concert. Now I'll conduct my study. Mom, can I go see the Sound Butchers in concert tonight? Of course, dear. And I have to compliment you on that great boyfriend of yours. I mean, with his not wanting to get a job and everything, what a free thinker! <laughs> Given those results, I'll have to refine my prediction. Mom might be pretty cool. I'll test her again later to see if my refined hypothesis holds up. <laughs> Psychologists use specific research methods to gather their information. The methods are tests, interviews, and observations. These are research methods. First, there are tests. Tests look at how a subject responds to a particular event or problem. They must be reliable. In other words, they have to produce results that are consistent and predictable. And they must be valid, meaning that they measure what they are designed to measure. Next are interviews, which gather information by studying how subjects describe themselves as they talk with the interviewer. And observations are descriptions that the investigator makes of the subject. You can make observations in either a laboratory setting or a natural setting like someone's home or workplace. Case studies are more in-depth observations that the investigators use to gather lots of information and draw conclusions that they hope to apply to other people as well as to the ones they're studying. Case studies may go beyond observations to include tests and interviews. Okay, there are three basic research designs or ways to set up an experiment. They are experimental studies, correlational studies, and descriptive studies. Your psychology professor is likely to test you on research design, so you better pay extra close attention to this section. By the way, this is the last free advice I'm giving you. Next time, it's going to cost you. Experimental studies give the most solid conclusions when you're testing hypotheses and cause-effect relationships. The investigator manipulates one or more factors in order to see what effect they'll have on behavior or mental processes. The experimental factors that the investigator manipulates to see what will happen are called the independent variables. The effects the investigator gets from the experiment are called the dependent variables. Why dependent? Because the results depend on the independent variables. All research studies should be replicable. In other words, other researchers should be able to repeat the experiment so the results can be further proved or disproved. Psychologists say that in order for a test to be useful in predicting behavior, you should be able to repeat the same experiment and get the same results 95 out of 100 times, or a probability of less than 0 0.05. Phew. In order for a study to be repeated exactly the way it was done the first time, the researchers who design the study have to carefully describe the independent variables, or the factors they manipulated in the experiment, and they have to describe the dependent variables, or the effect they got from the experiment. They also have to write down a list of exact procedures they followed to do the experiment. All these descriptions are called the operational definitions. Psycho Jackpot! Where your knowledge of psychology can mean big bucks! Welcome to Psycho Jackpot. I'm your host, Art Plinko, and I'd like to introduce you to our contestants. 
first, we have the lovely Joan Fleda from Rockville, Maryland. Hey, Joan. Hi, Art. Yeah, <laughs> right. Good to see you. And of course, we have Bob Tasky from Bloomington, Indiana. Hi, Art. Yeah. All right, contestants, here we go. Our first topic tonight is research designs. Okay, I'm gonna read you a question and give you three possible answers to the questions. Uh, Joni and, uh, and, and Bob, uh, you gotta hit your buzzers when you think you know which answer is correct. Here's the first question. What are independent variables? Your answer choices are A, the experimental factors that an investigator manipulates, B, the effects an investigator gets from an experiment, <laughs> Uh, Joan, what's your answer? It's A, Art. Independent variables are the experimental factors that an investigator manipulates. That's right, Joni, baby. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> now, for answering correctly, you win twice your weight in salt and a complete collection of Rita Digest from yeah! 1953 to 1962. Yay! Yeah. When researchers do an experiment and observe the results, they want to be certain they know exactly which factors in the experiment caused the results. So here's what they do. They randomly assign their research subjects to groups, the experimental group and the control group. The experimental groups and the control group are exposed to the exact same conditions, except the experimental groups are exposed to manipulation of the independent variable. In other words, Everything is the same for the experimental groups and the control group, except for the things that the researcher is tinkering with. This is very important because the researcher wants to know precisely what is causing the results. If only a couple things are different, it helps narrow the possibilities of what is causing the effects in the experimental groups. Researchers assign subjects to each group randomly. In other words, there's no reason why someone's chosen for one group or the other. This helps make sure that the different results between the two groups is not due to differences in the subjects. Well, the best thing you can do is just to start getting out your raw feelings about things that are troubling you. Um, yes, well, the hardest thing about all this is how we're always being exposed to the manipulation of the independent variable. Aren't we supposed to be assigned to groups randomly? Why am I always in the experimental group? I mean, just once I'd like to experience what it's like to be in the control group. Yeah. You go, girl, and take me with you. The second type of research design is the correlational study. Investigators use correlational studies to look at the relationships between the variables, or the things they want to study. For example, a researcher might want to know if there's a relationship between the number of exams given at a university in one week and the number of pizzas that the local pizza place sells during the same week. The researcher can't control how many exams are given or how many pizzas are sold, but she can see if there's a relationship between the two, and if so, what kind of relationship it is. So, in a correlational study, the researcher doesn't have control over the variables, but just studies the relation between them. A positive correlation is when the variables do the same thing at the same time. That is, as one increases or decreases, so does the other. So if pizza sales skyrocket during exam week at the end of each semester, we can say there's a positive correlation between exams and pizza consumption. A positive correlation suggests a direct relationship between the variables. They do the same thing at the same time. So like, what's a negative correlation? A negative correlation is when the two variables do the opposite thing from each other. If pizza sales dropped significantly during every exam week, there would be a negative correlation between exams and pizza consumption. A negative correlation suggests an indirect relationship between the variables. One variable does the opposite of what the other is doing. But there's one really important thing to keep in mind with correlations. You can't say for sure that the change in one variable, or one thing you're studying, causes the change in the other variable. With our pizza example, if you found that pizza sales consistently doubled during every exam week at your school, you still couldn't say for sure that students are ordering more pizza because they have more exams to study for. Professors may give more exams when it's cold. So maybe the students are just staying in and ordering pizzas because they don't want to go out in the cold. Or maybe it's just because they like sausage. Fact is, you just don't know. 
All you know for sure is that there seems to be some relationship between how many exams students are taking and how much pizza they're ordering. Hey, pizza man. Mmm, thanks. You want a bite? The third research method, descriptive studies, are the case studies and observations that we talked about earlier. Researchers find a systematic way to observe what they want to study, and they write down what they see. It is very simple, really. They may use their descriptions to form a hypothesis, which is an idea they want to test, and then they can design an experiment to test the hypothesis. So, psychologists do experiments using the scientific method. First, they develop a theory. Next, they form a hypothesis. Then they conduct a study. And finally, they adjust the hypothesis according to the results of the study and design another study to test the refined hypothesis. There are three ways, or research designs, that psychologists use to set up an experiment. They are experimental studies, in which researchers manipulate factors called independent variables to see what happens. Correlational studies, which look at relationships between variables. And finally, descriptive studies, where researchers write down descriptions of what they observe and often use these descriptions to help them form a hypothesis and set up a study. Section